Hey folks, J Poozer Animations here, bringing you guys a follow-up video of a little mini-series I started uh, about a year ago. Uh, I haven't continued it yet, but I do apologize for that. This is part two on how to customize your Transformers figure. Uh, it's specifically just for Transformers figures because all of the Transformers have a certain level of detail that companies like Hasbro and Takara normally don't paint. I'm going to show you how you can. Um, part one, we covered basically how to start, which was with uh, cleaning and priming your figure. In that video, it was the Dinobots. Uh, unfortunately, I finished the Dinobots already, so we're going to go on to another character. Um, it hasn't been primed, but it's the same basic principle for the figure. And this figure is Ironhide, which I recently... Just bought another one because I've been dealing with issues with the other one. So, um, part two to uh, customizing your Transformer is to actually paint the figure. Um, and you can go two ways about doing this. You can hand brush the paint onto the figure, or you can spray paint the paint onto the figure. I'm sure there are other methods of getting paint on there, but those are the basic two main ones. So it's hand brushing or spray painting. Me personally, it depends on what I want to do. If it's a full body repaint, most often times I'm going to spray paint the figure. Um, if it's not, then I'll hand paint. There are very few occasions where I do hand paint uh, a full body figure. Uh, recently, let me show you an example, was Breakdown. He was fully hand painted, as you can see. But uh, the key to doing it correctly or doing it efficiently is to have a, a somewhat large brush. You can see I have a large brush here, which will cover a lot of the area, so you don't have to uh, do a lot of work. Um, and Mason, may, uh, excuse me. Basically, when you paint it, you only need about two to three coats to get a nice solid coat, because the goal is one, for the primer to cover up the original color of the figure, which I always use black, uh, and two, uh, when you paint the figure, uh, it's to cover all that up to make it look like it's actually factory sealed paint. Um, a good example of this uh, would be, again, Breakdown. He was originally Roadbuster, and you don't see any orange or green parts anywhere other than this, because this under his wheel, because I didn't paint that part. But everything else, you don't really see. Um, I'm going to go back and finish this. But uh, the vehicle mode is pretty much done. So, uh, back to Ironhide. Let me close the roof up. I had the roof open like that because I was uh, painting the windows and I had to let them dry. So, um, he's going to stay black for this one. But um, detailing is another thing that you can do with your figure. Um... And it's, it's very simple. I know a lot of people freak out when they say, when someone says, oh, you should paint your figure. And it's like, no, I don't want to mess up. But um, you have to start from somewhere. And detailing is one of the most, is one of the easiest things you can do with customizing. You don't necessarily need a steady hand. You just need to be careful with what you do. And you have to pretty much know what you're doing. Um, for example, with detailing, what I want to do with Ironhide's vehicle mode, I want to repaint these uh, lights here to be all the way orange, like they're supposed to be, not just orange on the front and uh, the translucent blue color. Um, I want to do that. I want to repaint the headlights as an actual white instead of silver. Uh, same with these down here. These are just molded black down here, but I want to paint those white as well. Um, the headlights up here are going to be the blue color they're supposed to be. And these stripes up here, I want to be silver. Um, I want to paint the door handles silver. Uh, this here, uh, I think this is, would be where you hold uh, something, a handle for you to hold when you pull yourself up on the truck. I guess that's what it that is. Uh, that'll be silver. The smokestacks will be silver. And I will repaint the taillights here. Also, there's these uh, side lights here, I'm not sure what they're called, but you see them on the side of the car sometimes. That there, that there, those will be red, and the taillights will have various color. Um, 
yeah. And the wheels will be repainted black. So, um, how do you want to go about doing this? Well, there is really one way, typically. Um, you want to have a very, very, very small brush. Um, typically something of this size, as you can see. You can see that is a very fine tip. Um, other examples, you have these, which is slightly bigger. Slightly. But um, the goal is to get a very small brush so that you and use a little bit of paint as possible so that you go you don't go excess over uh, with the paint that way you don't you know mess up which is typically how that happens you put too much paint on the brush and then when you paint the paint drips over um, which is not what you want and if you do you need to have the color of the vehicle for instance if I were to mess up this headlight here if I had too much orange then you would have to go back with black and paint over the area to cover it up. Uh, you'd have to make sure it's also the same color as this, which they do have those colors. So, um, for now, I'm just going to paint these lights, and I will paint these lights as well. Uh, just to give you an idea of what exactly I'm talking about. Let me move a couple of these figures out of the way so I have some hand space to show you what I'm doing. Uh, Megatron can stay back there. I'm not really maybe moving around too much back there. So what we're going to need, uh, again, our tiny brush. Uh, we're going to need some paint. This. And this. Now, that's another thing that we need to discuss. Is what kind of paint do you use when you paint? Uh, typically, when you go to an arts and crafts store like uh, Hobby Town, Hobby Lobby, or uh, Michael's, they will have sections where they have small bottles of paint that you can buy. Uh, typically, you're not going to use craft paint because craft paint is, uh, is not as good as these paints that I use, which stick a lot better to the figure. Uh, craft paint is more for, well, arts and crafts, not customizing. Uh, just keep that in mind. Sharpies as well. Sharpies aren't... If you're looking for a long-term wear and tear, you're better off using these than you are Sharpie or permanent marker or anything else. Um, it'll also look better. So, uh, typically what I use is Tamiya paints, which I know these are at uh, Hobby Town USA. If you can find one of those near you, I have a membership with them. But uh, Michaels typically carries Tester's paint. Um, and you get these, they're like a dollar nineteen a bottle, I think. And uh, same for Hobby Town. Hobby Town, however, has more variety. They have Tamiya colors. Uh, they have some in these bigger bottles too, but they do cost more. Um, they have Testers here. They have uh, Model Masters paint as well. Model Masters is very good. I highly recommend this, uh, along with these other two. But if you have to choose one it'd be pretty much a tie between this and this because this is what i used on breakdown and it turned out very well um excuse me um so pretty much we're gonna start um no no we're not i have to finish my last point sorry lost my train of thought but um basically you have to no you don't have to do anything uh, it's either acrylic paint or enamel paint. Uh, it's really up to you. So it's really just trying it trial and error figure out what you like So you are going to have to experiment uh, With some paints. There's no real The best paint to use because you know to each his own everybody has their own opinions So whatever works for you is what you can use uh, There's really no definitive way to paint um, Because for me, I like hand brushing or the rather than uh Spray painting, but I do spray paint the primer because you're covering everything up. Um, a tip about spray painting, though, when you do spray paint, um, you, uh, let me see this. For example, if you wanted to spray paint, ooh, if you wanted to spray paint Ironhide here, and you only wanted to spray paint the body, and you wanted to leave the wheel this color, you'd have to get something like, uh, what I use is, uh, plastic bags, like the, uh, bags you get at the grocery store where you go shopping, Wrap the wheels around in that, 
Um, and anything else you don't want to paint, like these or these, you can wrap those in plastic as well, and you don't have to paint them. You can just paint over them and then just take them off, and then it'll be fine. Um, you can also use masking tape. Um, or, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, it escapes me, but it's regular tape. Uh, you know, like, uh, oh, whatever. Just tape, not, uh, duct tape. Do not use duct tape. Masking tape. And you can tape the windows over. You can paint over them. You can, if you can get fancy with them, you can use the tape as a stencil. You can paint around it and make designs like numbers or whatever. But they do have stencils like that, so you don't have to go that far into it. So, we're going to start. Uh, the idea is to shake the bottle very well before you use it. And uh, the paint is uh, to have a little bit of thinner in it, so it's not completely uh, stiff when you paint. Which I did that with all my paints. Now, uh, fortunately I have to learn that the hard way. So... I will have to take Ironhide off screen so I can paint them, just so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, because it is difficult to paint with the camera in front of me. So, I'm going to have Ironhide behind me. I'm going to take a little bit of paint. I will show you how much paint I use on my brush before I start, however. Uh, okay. We're going to use that much paint. Just a little bit. And we're going to lightly go over uh, the light. Do you need a steady hand for this? Uh, sort of. Not really, though. Uh, as I explained earlier, it's uh, more if you mess up. But uh, every action that you take, every brush stroke, if you do mess up, it's not impossible to fix. You can fix your errors. You don't have to start over. You don't have to scrap the whole project. Uh, you can keep going, really. Um, I'm going back in the bottle again because I need some more paint. But um, it's very simple to do. Once you get this paint on here, if you're doing a small surface, uh, what I do is uh, I dab on it a little and the paint just fills in the area. I don't really have to use brush strokes um, all that much. Going all the way around. Pretty much when you're done, it's going to look something like this. All the way around, you see I got a little bit on the uh, body of the car there. Right here, which is fine because I, I somewhat did that on purpose. I'll go back with black paint, which is the same color as this, and go over that and fix that. But uh, that's pretty much what you do. And you can see the difference between this side here, which is completely orange, and this side here, which is not. And you can see how that makes it look a lot better. Um, and typically what I do is I have a cup of water uh, next to me so that when I'm done, I can rinse off the brush. And then wipe it completely dry with a paper towel. And the brush is clean. So I'm going to close this orange paint just for time's sake, and I'm going to move on to the other lights. Now, it is it is a matter of color. Um, when you go to the craft stores, you're going to have a wide variety of colors. And to get the right color, you might want to ask an assistant if you have a picture that they can follow, or uh, it's just trial and error. A lot of these paints that I used, um, it's really just trial and error, finding out what colors worked. Um, but once you find out what colors work, you can really just quote-unquote memorize or find your favorite colors since you know what, uh, what certain colors look like. For example, a good example of what I'm talking about is, um, yes, this metallic silver, which uh, is here. I got this for testers. And then I had a different color silver which is aluminum, which is here. Now this one comes out, this one comes out a lot flatter than this one does. And as you can tell, just by looking at the bottles, 
you can't really tell a difference just by looking at it. Because, of course, it dries a lot differently than it looks when it comes out the bottle. Um, or, rather, it dries a lot differently than it looks. It's better than just um, going off the color here. If you assume it's this color, then you open the bottle and it's a completely different color. Then, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, mostly just picking paint is just trial and error. Uh, if a color doesn't work, take it back to the store and get another one. But, um... That's really all customizing is. You can't really start customizing unless you have your uh, your first project. You have to start somewhere. Everybody everybody was a rookie. So um, don't be afraid to start. Don't be afraid to try. Uh, I certainly am glad that I picked up a custom and tried. Because once you do, um, then once you get past painting, then you start getting to modding which I did with Chromia, I completely modified this to be a shield. It still transforms, and it looks a lot better. She doesn't have a whole bunch of junk on her back. So, customizing is fun. Um, once you get the hang of it, and once you start to understand your limits, what you can do, what you can't do, because there are some limitations. There are some things that I wish that I could do with customizing, and it's just not possible. But everything, typically, if you can imagine it and if you see that someone else has done it then you know that it is possible and you can try it um another thing that i didn't think was possible was with a darkest moon crankcase i completely spit split the hood down the middle and modified the chest so that the uh the front of the uh, truck folds down onto crankcase's chest which completely alters the transformation but it looks so good um, I didn't think that was possible at all, and yet I was able to pull it off. I'll share that custom with you, uh, po possibly this month. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. Um, just hints and tips on how to customize. I can't exactly show you how I specifically customize figures, for obvious reasons. But, um, just to give you a, a general overview of... How to start, how uh, to actually customize your figure. It's it becomes it starts off hard at first. I will admit that it is a bit difficult at first. But if you do the research, ask questions, get advice, and build off of that, then the experience that you get will help you to become a better customizer, and it it will become more fun than it is taxing, and it really isn't. But that's it. If you like this video, please give it a like. Leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns, or uh, opinions on customizing. And share your customizing experience. I'd love to hear it. Uh, please share this video. Subscribe for more. Uh, my name is Jay Puzo Animations. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.